Hello! In this tutorial, we are going to study a composite plate with the help of ANSYS Mechanical APDL and SOLIDWORKS. After the simulation, we are going to compare the results and compare with the theoretical and analytical study. The reason why I'm using ANSYS Mechanical APDL is because I find it easier to define my shell or surface and uh, easier to understand what, uh, what we are doing. So, let's begin. Let's start with the preprocessor and define the element type. Let's choose a shell. OK. Let's go to Options and Storage of Layer Data. We want all layers plus middle. OK. Now let's go to Material Props, Material Models, and, and let's choose as it's a composite material, structural, linear, elastic, orthotropic. The values I'm going to define they have a reason and uh, you can find it easily on my page which uh, the link will be on the description. For the um, elastic modulus let's say let's say 2.8125 E10 for the y direction, let's say 6.69767 E9. For the z direction, it's going to be the same. It's important to say that we are using the classical theory of composite laminated. For the Poisson ratio in the XY direction for the shear modulus it's they are going to be all the same let's click OK uh, in this phase we are going also to define the density, but it's only important if you are going to use um, if you are going to make a model analysis as we are going. So let's say 1672.5. Okay. Now let's go to sections, shell, layup and let's define our layup so for the first layer the thickness will be 0.00205 meters and the orientation it's, go it's going to be 0 degrees for the second layer the thickness will be 0 0.00245 the orientation will be 45 degrees. Uh, once more, ANSYS does not consider units, so it's up to you to be aware. For the third layer, it, uh, the thickness will be the same as the first, 0 0.00205, and the orientation will be minus 45 degrees. OK, now we defined the layup and the, the thickness properties of the laminated. OK, let's plot the section just for you to view what we just did. OK, and here you can see the, the way we defined the laminated. The first layer, 0 degrees the second 45 and so on. Now let's leave sections and let's go to modeling. Create key points. 
inactive CS. So, first key point, which will have the location 0, 0, 0. Apply. Let's go to the second, which will have 1.35 meters, 0, 0, apply. The third one will have 1 1.35, 2.3, and zero. Apply. The final one to complete the rectangular shape will have zero, 2.3, zero. Okay. Now we can leave key points and head up to lines. Lines. Straight line. Let's define our straight lines. Okay. And let's leave lines. We go to areas, arbitrary, by lines, and we will choose the ones we just draw. OK. Let's leave modeling and go to meshing. Here you can go to mesh tool and define it your mesh here. But I like to go to, I like to define it myself. But I like to define it myself and I use size controls, manual size, areas, all areas and I will define it as a 0 0.1 meter um, element length. Ok. Now we are going to mesh, areas, maps, by corners and let's first of all choose the area. OK, and now we are going to map the area. OK, as you can see the mesh is already done with the length I specified. Let's leave meshing and now the mesh is, is done, the geometry is done. Now we are going to the solution to define our loads. Apply, Structural, let's begin with Displacement. On Lines, let's choose these two, ok, and in this case they are all off with zero displacement, ok. Now for these two, they can rotate, so they are only constrained on the X, Y and Z direction. OK, now, this was something that it really took me a long time to understand. So, pressure. In this case, it's not a uniform pressure. So, we will we'll have to define it as a function. And for that, we are going to Parameters, Functions, Define, Edit. And here you have your calculator or your engine to build your function. In my case, it's 500 times. And here you can see it's not a time dependent function, but it's a um, Cartesian function. X, 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 X. So this is my function. Now we can save it. I'm gonna call it press and I'm gonna save it to my desktop. It doesn't matter. Now you can close it. And now you have to functions and read it from a file. In my case, I, al I already had one, but I'm gonna choose the one I just defined. Press, okay. Now you have to call it another name, or the same, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna just call it PR, 
and click OK. Now, continuing, continuing with the defining load, I'm gonna go to pressure and choose on areas. OK. Now, you have apply pressure on areas, but you, do, you don't want a constant value. You want to go to existing table. OK. And now you, can, you see the PR, the function you just defined. OK. And it's done. So, the basic problem, it's already done. Now you just have to go to solve current ls. OK. Solution is done. Let's just move it around. And now we go to general post proc and go plot results deformed shape deformed plus undeformed ok and, and uh, as you can see I'm just gonna move it to a better position and as you can see by the pressure function we defined the deformed is what we were expecting plus we can go to counter plot nodal solution and in my case I'm going to see stress and I'm gonna choose X component of stress ok and as you can see you have your results down here and as you can see by the edge uh, that was hold off it's, it has the maximum and the minimum stress that's because it's not a uh, isotropic material and it's built by layers so let's imagine the first layer it's going to be subjected to tr uh, traction and the the last layer or the bottom one it's going to be sub sub subjected to compression so you have the maximum and the minimum values but they are almost the same in magnitude so that's it you can explore it a little bit more in another solution you can see the y component of stress the z it's it will not it will not exist because it's not it's it's a matter of calculus and the the algorithm approach of the software you can uh, see the shear stress <coughs> we are going to see the z component of displacement because we want to compare it when using solidworks ok and uh, as you can see the maximum displacement occurs and it's going to be here the values are in meters so it's 0 0.227 millimeters <clears throat> and that's it now if, if we want to make a, um, a model analysis it's easy just go to solution analysis type and let's define a new analysis model ok ok and you can see it appear analysis options let's click it block lengths in this case we are going to use it and uh, let's say for modes to extract extract yes and for again okay okay let's leave it as default okay and let's solve current ls okay solution is done now we are we we will go to general post post proc read results first set plot result different shape ok and as you can see the first mode of uh, vibration it's uh, the deformed it's what is expected now we can go to next set plot results different shape 
OK. And as you can see, the deformed it's what we expect also. We can see next set, but results, deformed shape, OK. And once again, it makes sense. So, for the ANSYS application, that's it. I hope you liked and uh, it's helpful for you.